Just for a moment, it takes my breath away to look out at, at all of you and to see the light shining. I mean, just, you're just radiant. And I had entitled my encouragement this morning, let your light shine. What a foolishness may I talk because when I shine already. <laughs> you are shining. And it is, it is, I know my own consciousness as well, but I know it is the consciousness of every person present that allows that radiance burning in the temple of your own lives to emit this, this light which is so powerful, so transformative, so healing, so beautiful, so touching, that it overwhelms me. I experience it sometimes down at the, the prison on Tower Street because I see young and not so young and in fact some quite old men who thirst for that light. They yearn for that light. And I think to myself, if only somebody had, had shone for them, what a difference it might have made in their lives and in their affairs. And so my friends, I want you to think of yourself as a center for spiritual living. Can we say that? I am a center for spiritual living. Can we say that? I am a center for spiritual living. My light is shining. Would you say to your neighbor, you are a center for spiritual living and your light is shining. You are a center for spiritual living and your light is shining. So let your light shine, my friends, right where you are. If you're here in this beautiful sanctuary this morning at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, let your light shine as it continues to shine. And if you're joining us in consciousness by watching us uh, on the World Wide Web, let your light shine. For you see, wherever you are at this very moment, you are radiating your consciousness out into the universe. And the law of attraction is bringing back to you exactly what you are sending out. And so my question really is, are you sending out negative opinions of others? Is your thought atmosphere filled with apprehension regarding local and world conditions? Do you radiate love or do you radiate fear? In short, what is your consciousness attracting to you at this very moment? When we set our intention for our light to shine and to be radiating centers of the God qualities, and remember the God qualities are faith, love, strength, wisdom, power, and imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, renunciation, and life. And when you set your intention for your light to shine and for these qualities to, to just emanate from your heart center, you really are performing a transformative ministry. You are ministering to the world in which you live. You are making a difference. A lot of times we think, it's me one. I don't know if I'll make a difference. You know, I wonder if I'll come to, I don't think I'll come to church. There are enough people there and, they, and they're doing the work. I think I'll just sleep in this morning. But you make a difference, my friends, in a very, very real way. Everyone who participates in this Temple of Light community is God's trustee. And you are charged with the responsibility of knowing the truth for yourself and teaching it through example to others. You are called to be a light in the darkness and salt for seasoning one another. I love that, that um, those words of Jesus. It was, I think it was the sermon, on, the sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5. And he says, ye are the salt of the earth. And he, he, he comments that if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot. He was talking to his disciples, my friends, those many, many moons ago, about the power of their consciousness. And his message to them 
still has great relevance for each one of us today. For what he was saying was that it doesn't take great numbers to make a significant change in the world. Just as it takes just a pinch of salt to change the flavor of a pot of stew. So it just takes a few people with the consciousness of light, which is the highest vibration, to change the world around them. So Jesus is called to his disciples in that beautiful and articulate sermon, really echoes across the centuries to touch our hearts this morning as we celebrate uh, the receiving in of our new members. For when you are seasoned with the salt of truth, your own body of knowledge begins to reveal a new dimension in your world of affairs, and you become a radiating center of light. There's a lovely story about a, a, a man who, um, as a young man, he started one of those, you know, those, those dime 10 cent stores in America. It was a corner store, and it did very well. And people loved him, and his light was shining, and so um, it became t two stores. And then before you knew it, it was a chain of, of stores. And then he grew older, and um, he fell ill, and the, the doctors feared that you know, his, his, his time was soon up on this plane of existence. He had three sons, and so they, t they took him home to make him comfortable. And he called the three sons, and he gave each of them a dollar. Remember, he had a, dollar, he had a chain of dollar stores. And he said, one of you will be the, the CEO, the chief huncher of this, this empire of dollar stores. But you have to do a test for me. You have to take this dollar, and you are to buy something with it that will fill this room, this little bedroom he's in. So this three of them, of course, excited at the prospect of taking over their father's vast empire of dollar stores, went out. And they returned, and the father said to son number one, uh, what did you do with your dollar? And he said, well, I went to Farmer Brown, and I bought two bales of hay. And he went outside, and he brought in the bales of hay, and he emptied it all over the room. And so it was hay everywhere, you know. Uh, and then um, when it settled, it didn't fill the room from corner to corner. So he said to his second son, second son, what did you do with your dollar? And the second son said, well, I bought two pillows, two feather pillows, 50 cents a piece. And he brought in the two pillars and he ripped them open and he, sh you know, he shook them out and the whole place was you know, awash with feathers, but soon they settled and they didn't fill the room from corner to corner. And so he said to son number three, and you son, what did you do with your dollar? You think you couldn't fill the room? He said, well, he said, first of all, I went to a dollar store like yours and I asked the proprietor to, to change my dollar for me into quarters and dimes and whatever, nickels. And he said, I gave 50 cents to charity because you have always been a giver. You've given of yourself all your life. And then I gave 20 cents uh, to the church. I hope it's Temple of Light he's coming to. <laughs> he said, and then I invested, I gone 70, I invested 20 cents. Uh, because you wisely invested your money. And I took the last 10 cents and I bought this. And he reached into his pocket and he took out a small book of matches and a candle. And he put it on the bedside table and he lit it and he turned off the light. And of course, the room was filled with light from corner to corner. And the father said, yes, you, you. And so I have an assignment for you, my friends. Uh, regulars at the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living, know I always give an assignment. You can't escape. And I also know the people who do it and those who say, eh, well, maybe. Um, but I'd like particularly our new members to really take this assignment seriously. I want you every morning when you awaken to set your intention to let your light shine. And then I want you to write in your journal three ways in which you are going to let that happen during the day. So you set your intention in the morning to let your light shine. And I want you to write, not just think it, 
there's something powerful about writing it down in your journal or on a sheet of paper somewhere. Three ways in which you are going to let your light shine during the day. And then in the evening, I want you to review your day and just see if you, if you accomplished your intention. And if you didn't, don't beat upon yourself. Just reset your intention to do, to do it the next day. Is that a, a good assignment? Yes. How will we let our lights shine? For you see in that same wonderful Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16, Jesus says, and I quote, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, and neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And that heaven is the heaven of your consciousness, my friends. And that light is already burning within you. You need to nurture it, that flame, and fan it into that blaze divine so that wherever you go and whatever you are doing, you are the light, not just for yourself, but for everyone whom you come to encounter on life's path. And the wonderful thing is, you don't really have to do anything. It's there already. All you need to do is to set your intention to let it shine. I guess that's where I want to leave you today and just to say how wonderful it is to stand here and watch you radiating that light, which is the answer to the world's, all of the world's challenges and in particular to our challenges here in beautiful Jamaica. Let your light shine. Never for a moment allow anything to dim that light. Just remind yourself that it is the light of the cosmic Christ full of grace, full of truth, and it is what you are here to do. It is who you are and how you are meant to be. God loves you, and so do I. Namaste.